Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to use Excel to find binomial probabilities. Some of these will be probability density functions, PDFs, and some of them will be probability cumulative functions, um, which is CDF, which means that you're adding all of the values until you tell it to stop. Okay, um, there are a couple different formulas that I'm going to use to find these in Excel. In order to use the formulas in Excel, you do need to know the number of trials. That's how many times did you do the experiment. And you also need to know the probability of success. So the situation we have here is a die is rolled 10 times. And we want to let x equal the number of times a 5 is rolled. And so we're going to find the, the probability of rolling the following. I went through one of each type so that you understand how to do this. You would just change your values accordingly. Okay, so like I said, the two things that we need to know are the number of trials that we are doing. So in this case, we rolled the die 10 times. So n would equal 10. And the probability of success, which is p, would be 1 out of 6 since there is one five out of six numbers on a die. If you were using the binomial probability formula, you do need to know the probability of failure. And just remember that that is always one minus p, so that would give us five out of six. You don't need that for the, for, or for the formula in Excel. You only need to know your number of trials and your probability of success. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up Excel and find the probability of each of these events. For the first one, we want to find the probability of getting exactly three. So that means that we rolled the die 10 times and we have the probability of getting exactly three successes. So for this, you can type it anywhere in Excel. You would just start typing binome and we're going to use the dot distribution one for this one. Uh, the number is going to be whatever value you have in here for x, so that would be 3. The trials is your n, so that would be 10. The probability of success would be 1 divided by 6. And the cumulative part, you're going to say true if it's a cumulative distribution function where you have to start with 0 and add until you tell it to stop. So just know that with cumulative, they start with the probability of getting 0 and add until whatever value you put in for your number s um, and that's where it will stop counting. For this one we want it false um, because we just want the one value. We want exactly three and nothing else. We don't want to add anything else. Okay and so the point 1550 would be our approximate answer. Typically they'll have you round to four decimal places with probabilities but just read accordingly um, because every time you do these problems, they do ask differently. So at least two. There's two ways that you can find this in Excel. Um, at least two means that I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. And so this would be a cumulative distribution. Okay. Um, the thing that you have to remember is that if we use the binome dot distribution that it's going to start at zero. So I don't want zero in my answer. So when I put this in, I would have to do one minus by my binomial fo formula. And I would stop at one less than this value. So I would stop at x is one, okay? Because I want zero and one excluded. So if I use the same formula that I just did, I would type in equals one minus binome dot distribution. The number S is where is my last excluded value? I want two included in the answer, so I have to go one less than that. One is the last thing that I do not want included. And then I would just do 10. My probability again is one sixth. This time, I want it to be true for the cumulative. And the reason I'm doing one minus is because I want everything above one in my answer. Okay, so I get 0.5155. The other way you could do this to me, I think is a little bit easier, is I would do my binome.distribution.range. 
My trials would be the 10 times that I rolled it. My probability of success is one sixth. And then the number S is where do I want to start counting? So in this case, two is where I stop. And then I want it all the way through 10, which is the total number of trials that I have. So I want to add from two to 10. And when I hit enter, notice I get the same exact value. Um, this one just doesn't show as many decimal places. Um, I can increase the number of decimal places that I have, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, so with this, typically they have you round to four decimal places anyway. So we would just say that that is approximately 0.5155. So either one will work. A lot of it depends on whether it's less than or greater than. If it's less than, I would go ahead and use the first one. If it's greater than, then I would use the second formula. All right, so looking at the next one, we want to find the probability that our x value is less than 5. That means it's 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Okay, for this one, like I said, you can use either formula, the range formula. Um, for this one, I would just do the binome distribution. My number of trials, I'm going to have to go 1 less than 5 because 5 is not included, so I would stop at 4. With 10 trials, my probability of success is 1 sixth. And the cumulative distribution for this one, I would enter true because I do want to add that value. Okay, so 0.9845 would be my answer. And if you wanted to, since the probabilities are the same, you could just plug into here with using a cell, like I could plug in my trial here, and then I could use the formula. So let's say that my trials, or not my trials, my successes, if you don't want to keep typing the formula, you could just put them in, say, B1. And then when I'm using this formula, if I wanted to, instead of putting the 4, I could select cell B1. Right now, it's not going to allow me to do it because I don't have anything in there. Um, it's going to automatically put the zero in there. Um, so since I put four in there, it will change. If I do three, it will change. If I do two, it will change. So if you don't want to have to keep retyping the formula, you can always use a cell. And then when you change that value, it will automatically change your answer here. Okay, so that's a possibility too if you want to save a little bit of time. Um, for the next one, at most three. At most means the highest that it can be. So for this one, it would be the probability that x is less than or equal to three. And again, for this one, um, since I already have in this cell right here, my binomial distribution, 10, 1, 6, true. For this one, we want to stop at 3. So we can write that out, and that would give me my answer, the 0 0.9303. If it confuses you to use another cell, all you would have had to do is type in the 3 instead. Okay, more than 2, the probability that would be greater than 2. And this does not include 2. So this is different than this one because at least 2 includes it. Greater than 2 does not include it. And so for this one, I would probably use the formula that we did here, the, the range of values. And so the binome distribution range, I would change it that I want from 3 to 10 because I want values greater than 2. So my next value that is greater than 2 would be 3. And so the 0.2248 would be my answer. Okay. And then for between with inclusive, that means that it includes both of the endpoints. This would be the probability that my x is greater than or equal to 2, but less than or equal to 5. So for this one, I would definitely use the same formula that we did here, the binome.distribution.range. And from this, we want to start at 2 because it is inclusive. That means it includes the value. And we want to stop at 5. So I can use 2 to 5, and the 0 0.5131 would be my answer. And for this, I am going to add one more decimal place um, 
because for this one, the, I had it down on paper since I had rounded it to decimal places. It did go ahead and round this number up, which makes it, if I'm rounding to four decimal places, it would make me round incorrectly. So just be careful with that, that if you do round it in Excel, um, know that you want to make sure that you round at the very end. Okay. So with this, it's very easy to find this in Excel. Like I said, there's multiple ways of getting some of these answers, um, but hopefully this video helps you to find your binomial probabilities using Excel. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.